So I got a new item I want to try out today, made by Flame Tech Grills, and it's called the Smoke and Sizzle. Let's dive in. All right, so today we have the Smoke and Sizzle by Flame Tech Grills. This is a company that I think is just starting out. I never heard of them, but they did contact me and they said, hey, we made this new really cool little gadget for kettles. We noticed you're a kettle lover. Would you like to review it and give us your feedback on how to improve on it? So they're not paying me to do this video. They have zero influence on what I say, but I figured, sure, why not? It's definitely a cool looking thing. I can see that they went with a different design approach. It definitely reminds me of the slow and sear, which I know is extremely popular. Now, full disclosure, today's gonna be a first impressions video because I can't really say I endorse or not endorse a product until I've had a chance to use it for like six months or so. But my first impression videos are usually like 90% spot on, unless there's something really alarming that I see that I'm like, all right, you know, this isn't gonna work out. It's a pretty simple design, so I can't say there's anything that's alarming about it. What I can tell you is, when I checked this thing out, when I first saw it, first off, it is made in China, it's designed in the USA, but it's pretty thick material. I mean, they definitely stamped some really thick steel on here. I was a little disappointed that there is a dent when it first arrived. This is not the manufacturer's fault. They had packaged it just fine. I think this happened in transit. And when I received the product, it was waiting for me on my front door. The packaging was destroyed. And I remember hearing whoever ended up delivering it tossed it because I heard that distinct when it hit the ground. And I was really disappointed to see that it was dinged up it's not gonna affect how this thing performs in any way. So, sucks for me, but hopefully your delivery guy doesn't have a habit of tossing packages like mine tends to do. So, I got some coals, they're lighting right now. We'll get those going. And I figured I'll show you guys how to use this. I also got a rump roast. For those of you that know, you steak fans out there, you can make steak picanha with the rump roast. But today we're just gonna do a roast. We're gonna smoke it, add in some water, keep things moist, and see how this thing works. I have used it a couple times though, since I've gotten it, cleaned it up. There's some stains here and there from prior use, but overall it cleans up pretty well. But today we'll try a roast out. The smoke and sizzle is really easy to use. Place it down and then get your coals piping hot. I always recommend using a chimney starter. I had some leftover coals, so this is perfect. Make sure you always have enough coals for your particular cook and then just lay them out evenly. Now you probably noticed a lot of ash on the opposite side. In hindsight, I should have went the opposite way, but for camera purposes, it is what it is. Let's talk about that drip tray and water bin. It has enough capacity to hold 32 fluid ounces. And that charcoal barrier can give you enough for 10 hours of charcoal use. And it's actually pretty high. It does a really good job of deflecting the heat. We're gonna be smoking up a rump roast today. I've actually cut into it a bit just so I can allow the seasoning to go all the way through. And I'm gonna be using my meter two plus meat thermometer to ensure the perfect doneness. I'm gonna place the rump roast on the opposite side of the coals for indirect cooking. So at this point, the smoke and sizzles giving us plenty of smoke, but how well does it actually sizzle? The only way to find out is by searing the rump roast. I can't stress just how easy that was. Also on a side note, if you never had a rump roast, I highly recommend it. It's a great, cheap, beginner-friendly roast for smoking. Okay, so what are some of the pros and cons to the smoke and sizzle? Well, for one, could be a pro or con, but you are utilizing now half your grill. So half the space of your grill is taken up. For example, when you're using a diffuser plate, 
And this is also true to the slow ones here. The diffuser plate still allows you to use the entire surface area of your grill because the coals are under the diffuser plate and they're diffusing. And you can even still add water, right? You can, on top of the diffuser plate, add a tray, fill it up with some water. So the diffuser plate gives you the advantage of using the entire grill. I think the build quality is great and it's thick materials, so no complaints there. The design can be improved though. In particular, the water reservoir or where you put the water, it's a little shallow. Not a big deal when you're pouring water in, but when you're taking it out and you're taking the smoke and sizzle out, it's hard to balance it and it's really easy just to spill everything everywhere and get your grill really dirty. Now, you're not supposed to fill it all the way up, just to clarify, you really don't need that much water. But even filling it up just a tiny bit, there's not a lot for the walls, right? So combine that with the juices being collected from the food and all that, it just kind of, I wish it was a little higher, right, to prevent spilling everything everywhere. So what are my final thoughts? If you are considering buying the Smoke and Sizzle, go for it. I think it's well made. I also think it's a good design approach to the Slow and Sear. It's just a different design approach, right? So it's good in that sense, and it's gonna be targeting and it's marketed towards the other half of those users. As far as like controlling temperatures, it did just fine. The food came out delicious. There's no complaints there whatsoever. Is it better than the slow and sear? I don't know, right? I've never owned a slow and sear. They're very popular. And I think this is probably as good. If not, it's gonna rival it. Is it better than the diffuser plate? That, I don't know. I'd love to do a video comparing this to the diffuser plate. I'd love to put them head to head against each other and see how they compare. If you want me to make that video, more than happy to do it. Leave me a comment below and I'll look into making a video versus the diffuser plate. Just by intuition, just by looking at the design, I think the diffuser plate is going to be superior for two reasons. One, the diffuser plate is diffusing all the heat and the coals are underneath. So you still have the entire cooking space on the grates and you are utilizing your entire grill. Likewise, the diffuser plate, whether you choose to light all your coals and then put a diffuser plate on top or just light a small section for low and slow for smoking, the diffuser plate's doing what it's designed to do, diffuse the heat, in theory, as evenly as possible around your grill. So that does two things. Controls temperatures a little bit better, diffuses the heat, but also when you are smoking and you are just lighting a small section, you're not going to run out of coals as quickly. It's gonna be more efficient because the heat's being controlled, the coals are being controlled, and in theory, you're gonna get more life out of your coals. So I think the diffuser plate will be more superior, but that's just a guess. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, please consider subscribing and joining our channel membership so we can continue making videos like this one. Take care.